Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Team Minus 365. Today's episode, we're recovering the updates from Microsoft in January of 2023. If you watch these update videos in the past, you know I focus on what's relevant to the MSP space, blocking out the noise from the 100 or so announcements that come from Microsoft each month. As a quick reminder, I do have these updates in a white labelable format that you can subscribe to, and I'll have that link below in this video. As always, if this content's helpful, go ahead and like and subscribe. Otherwise, let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, so getting into it here, we have a lot of announcements to cover. There's a lot of new updates into the new year here. But just a quick reminder that I do supplement this video with a blog post with more information and links that you can check out after you watch this video. Getting into it here, though, we're going to start with Microsoft Teams. This first announcement is related to Teams flyout enhancements. And as you can see in the screenshot, just giving users a better experience to access the applications or add new applications within the messages that they're in within a group or within a Teams channel. This will happen mid-February, be complete by late February. This next one here is related to video filters in Teams meetings. This is something that you've seen probably within Zoom, if you use Zoom today as well. I think they're just trying to reach a parity here, but it's basically allowing users to augment their video stream with visual effects, with frames and styles. You can configure those in the pre-meeting join experience, as you can see in the left screenshot, as well as during the meeting as well too in the right screenshot. You can see more of those visual effects on those users within that screenshot as well. Timelines for this one is early February, be complete by late April. Next one here is an end of life announcement for the wiki pages within Microsoft Teams. So if you have any users leveraging the wiki pages, they will have an experience to export that wiki content into a OneNote notebook. And this is kind of showing that experience here in a short level format of just migrating that data over. This will happen mid-February, so you likely will want to get ahead of this if you have users using the wiki tab. Next one here is related to federated group calling. This is basically saying that you have federation set up with an outside organization. You're going to be able to basically leverage the calling aspect, screen sharing over the internet connection without any PSTN usage charges. This will happen early January, be complete by mid-January. So by the time you're watching this video, it's likely that you already have access to that feature. And then the next one here is actionable missed call notification activity. You can see that in the screenshot here on the left-hand side here of the Teams channel environment where you have the ability to call right back from the notifications versus pivoting into the call section of Teams and then having to call back from there. So just reducing a few steps there within the process. This will have an early February be complete by mid-February. Next one here I thought was pretty cool. This is the automatic lowering of a user's raised hand after speaking. It's basically going to alert attendees in the meeting uh, to basically lower their hand after they've had a chance to speak. So using a little bit of the voice recognition there to automatically prompt them to lower their hand. This will happen mid-March, be complete by late March. Shifting into Microsoft Intune here, this is a completely selfish plug, but I do have a new course up on Udemy for Microsoft Intune, which is an introductory crash course. Basically get you acclimated to all the newest and latest features and functionality in 2023, and it has a whole section on Apple device management. So there's absolutely no presentation or PowerPoint slides within the video, and I cover some of the very popular topics such as Windows Autopilot, Apple Automated Device Enrollment, the application deployment across Windows, Mac OS, iOS, and Android devices, along with some of the common functionality that you would want to configure like security baselines, configuration profiles, PowerShell scripts, and things like that. So I'll link that below, but definitely go ahead and check out this course. Shifting into Microsoft Viva here, this is also integrated with Teams and Outlook. This does require a Viva Insights license, but it's basically giving you the ability to see praise highlights in the profile card within Teams and Outlook. You can see that here in this particular screenshot right up top. And I think it's just kind of cool just to show that here as well to celebrate some of the praise that's going on within the organization. This will happen early February, be complete by late February. Shifting into Microsoft Outlook here, this is another cool one I thought was a good experience for Outlook on the web. This is allowing meeting participants to quickly access meeting content, such as the meeting recording, any type of PowerPoint presentation, things like that, all from within the calendar experience. And you can see that here below, this is the meeting recap. You have the recording, you have the transcript, you have attendance, along with any attachments that were shared in that meeting as well too. 
This will happen late January, be complete by late February. This was an announcement that was made earlier last year, but I wanted to bring it into focus here because they've shifted the timelines. This is inline search during message composing. Users are able to use the at symbol there and then pick from a certain level of context between people and files and certain things like that. Um, so they can easily find what they want to tag within an email message. This is going to happen from now as a phase rollout from now until early February. Next one here is related to Microsoft Exchange. This was a new feature or commandlet coming from PowerShell that will allow you to test the exchange transport rules that you have within a tenant. So if something is wrong with those rules, you're able to better test it without having to contact Microsoft support directly and you get better telemetry about what might be going on that's causing that to fail. This will happen late January, be complete by mid-February. Shifting into Azure AD or Microsoft Entra, as it's going to be known longer term, the IPv6 support is coming to Azure AD here. And so they're gonna support both IPv4 and IPv6, but this has some implications if you are using the named locations within Azure AD or conditional access location-based policies. So I'll have some links in the documentation so you can look that up with the implications, but it could cause some false positives for users or block their access potentially, depending on what IPs you're listing in there, uh, along with what IPs that the users are accessing corporate data from as well too. And so the timelines for this one is going to be again a phased approach, but it's gonna start in March of 2023, be complete by early July. This next one here is probably not going to be applicable on a wide scale, but I thought it was pretty interesting for companies that have many tenants, maybe in different locations that are trying to collaborate. So this is called cross-tenant synchronization. And as you can see in that diagram there, it allows you to basically create users and synchronize them uh, across tenants so that they can access corporate resources in those tenants as well too, like the applications or non-Microsoft applications as well too, even from a third party perspective like ServiceNow is a appropriate use case. So you can dive into this documentation. I'm not gonna go through it for the sake of time here, but this will happen mid January, be complete by early February as far as the private preview goes. Last one here related to Microsoft Azure AD and Entra is the introduction of the Entra Admin Center. This is now available if you go to entra.microsoft.com and log in as an admin within that experience. And you can see in the screenshot here, it's basically giving you a new format for accessing everything that you normally would do within Azure AD. I like the organization pretty well. It's pretty simplistic and easy to understand, but it is going to be the future state of the admin center there. So might want to start leveraging it today. Shifting into SharePoint here, this was another cool one that came out for external file request and SharePoint document library. It's basically giving users the ability to publish a folder and then they can share a link where others can upload files into that folder as well too. It's kind of a new way to share documentation in a secure fashion. And the timelines for this one's gonna be early February and be complete by late February. For OneDrive here, this is an updated experience for the files on demand settings on Windows devices. You can see in the screenshot down below, they're gonna have two new settings here that you can configure, uh, which is not going to include the files on demand toggle, which is a single setting. So now it's basically given the option to uh, download files as you open them, which is the recommended setting and then download all files now. So it's basically just saving space on the device as well too, making them cloud only until users need them on their Windows devices. So this will happen early February, be complete by late February. Lastly here, shifting into the admin section, just wanted to make a note that the GDAP timelines are shifting. I've been posting a lot about GDAP recently on my channel, just covering all the various aspects of the migration, but Essentially here, Microsoft's pushing out the impending events, such as the ability to no longer create the delegated admin permission relationships or DAP relationships with customers, along with them forcing you and pushing you into GDAP and creating those relationships for you at a certain point. So they said in the article on Partner Center that the new dates will be delivered in February 15th of 2023, and it's giving us a 60 day notice. So it's at least 60 days out from that time period in which we'll have to take mandatory action. So just giving you a little bit more time. They also mentioned that they're adding the ability to bulk remove DAP relationships with their bulk migration tool on that date as well too. 
If you're not familiar with that tool, I do have a whole tutorial video on that on my channel, which I'll link below here in this video as well too. Okay guys, that's everything that I wanted to showcase in today's video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, like I mentioned at the top of the video, like and subscribe if you guys wanna see more content around Microsoft and the MSP space. Thanks guys, have a great day.